All history is a collection of stories, or what we call narratives. But in history, not all stories get an equal place. Some get promoted, others get pushed on the side. Because of people in power who can decide what goes out, stories of victims, like a blank slide, often go unrecognized and unacknowledged. My research is about a branch of victim narratives, stories emerging from a revolution that took place in Sri Lanka when I was just three years old. In July 1987, a political movement in Sri Lanka, the People's Liberation Front, rose up in arms against the state. In the conflict that ensued, over 60,000 people lost their lives. A vast majority of these killings were carried out by the state military, who enforced abductions, incarcerations, torture, rape, public display of bodies, enforced disappearances. The sons and the daughters of some of these victims were my friends, people known to me. The trauma of losing a near and dear one haunts them to this very day. When the conflict was over, its history was written by powerful people in places of privilege. The victims, they had a story, but that story was pushed into the margins. It was suppressed. Now, my research is all about getting that story back into the center and setting it side by side with what the dominant authors claim is history. I'm a student of literature. Using conceptual tools that are available in literary theory, I analyze the memoirs of writers, writers who have gone through the camps, who have survived with mental and physical scars to bear witness to what exactly took place behind closed doors. Analyzing their writing, I look at how they challenge and dismiss claims made by narratives of people in power. My research is all about giving a voice to a stolen and murdered generation of people. Based on my findings, I propose to write a biography, a biography that encapsulates that victim victimization, one that will put long overdue color and detail on what is otherwise a historical blank slide 